Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to, to Sing Live again. Um, I was telling Kwong, I, I love to start on time and finish right on time because we have an exciting live case and two great lectures to follow. Um, I'd like to quickly introduce uh, myself and my co-chair. My name is Jack from Singapore, the National Heart Centre, and Professor Kwong, Bang Mai, Vietnam, my co-chair. The case is going to be operated out of his centre. I'd like to briefly introduce this session in collaboration from the Vietnam National Heart Institute. Uh, and my panelists uh, from either left or right, uh, Professor Takashi Akasaka from Japan, Dr. Hui from Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, Dilin from uh, Hanoi, uh, Dr. Duncan from uh, Hong Kong, uh, Dr. Khan from Bangladesh, Dr. Niu Ming Hang from uh, Vietnam, uh, of course, D.W. Park from Korea, Sunsaki Kitani from uh, Japan, Dr. Wu from Vietnam. Our chat moderator today is Dr. Dat. And uh, without further ado, we'll get uh, my co-chair, Professor Kwang, to let's go straight to the care plan. Uh, thank you, Jack, for introducing uh, everyone. And once again, and uh, welcome to the uh, our section. Uh, we, we got a like here from Vietnam National Heart Institute, uh, back my. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Professor Phan Mang Hung from Vietnam and, uh, and the team at uh, the CAT Lab now. So the CAT Lab, go on now. Hello, hello. hello. Uh, Dr. Quang, can you hear us? Uh, yes, we can hear you quite well. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I uh, can hear Jack Chen, Dr. Quang, and Oklandis. On behalf of uh, Vietnam National Heart Institute, I would like to thank the Organity Committee to take us a chance to show our case today. So uh, actually, we have done some step uh, because as, as a patient a little bit the high risk, so we already done some step. Now we uh, move to the main pass. But uh, for starting, I would like to introduce our team here. Uh, beside me, Dr. Le Xuân Thần, uh, Dr. Nguyen Hiếu Tuấn, and we have a, a chief nurse here and our team member here. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Hilton. We present uh, a little bit uh, brief about the cases. Dr. Tun, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, the chairman and everyone. Uh, this is our case tonight. Uh, today. This is an uh, 80 years old female uh, with hypertension and diabetes for over 15 years and writes an effort to me five years ago. Uh, she uh, go to hospital because she has a uh, typical chest pain and did the angio coronary, uh, coronary angiography in another, uh, another hospital. Uh, so, so because the, uh, the complexity of coronary disease, so uh, she transfers to my hospital. In ECD, we can see the small Q wave in the AD2, uh, DD2, D3, and AVF. Uh, lab test is uh, quite good, except the uh, Moderate uh, reduce of uh, renal function with EGF is only uh, 39 lm per minute. In uh, coronary angiogram, we can see the uh, so severe stenosis of left main disease and suspect of uh, an, uh, vulnerable or uh, also plug in the left main. Uh, in uh, this view, you can see there uh, there is the very severe stenosis of mid uh, surf and mid LED involved to the diagonal. One, and and also the uh, lesion is so tight, uh, sub uh, total occlusion in RCA, and total three vessel disease is a uh, very uh, toxic cities. So, uh, so there are some key clinical data. This patient uh, says so advantage uh, age female with hypertension, diabetes, CKD, right nephrectomy five years ago, uh, and coronary angiography. We can see severe snap main stenosis. Uh, and the stenosis of uh, LED surfs and RCA, and all the vessel is very toxic cities. We uh, uh, syntax score is uh, so high, and uh, she uh, is uh, available for uh, cabbage, but the uh, she and her patient refuse cabbage, so we decide to do PCI for this patient. Uh, the first uh, time PCI, we do PCI for RCA. We use two wire and balloon and put two stand, fish the mid L RCA uh, to ostium of RCA to enhance the blood flow 
uh, for the, uh, for, from the right. And you can see there, after the first uh, PCI, uh, the vessel is good, blood is, uh, uh, flow is good, and all the cybrand is remain. And, to, uh, and today we discuss about uh, PSI left main, LD and LC. Yeah, please, uh, Professor Hu. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tuấn. So, uh, uh, I think this is a quite a challenging case since uh, the complex and high risk cases. But uh, we uh, already done the RCA. Today we have a plan, as uh, Dr. Tuấn mentioned before. Uh, we will just uh, try to uh, engage and try to uh, cross the uh, mid uh, LD. But the patient have a little bit chest pain and uh, the flow is uh, very uh, slow at the LCA, so we already fixed the uh, mid LCA and we uh, do uh, inverse. So now I change, so I, I, I think I have to fix the uh, uh, left main to uh, uh, LCA with a crossover. So uh, why I do that? So uh, Dr. Tuấn will uh, show the inverse uh, image for you because uh, we found that the uh, osteum of the LD is, uh, I think it's still okay, so but uh, so I think so we uh, do for the crossover standing from the left main to LCA and uh, for the remain of the awesome of the LD, we, uh, I, I will use a drug cortic balloon. So Dr. Tuấn, please, can you show the IVERS? Yeah. This is uh, the IVERS finding. We can see stand in and surf and a little bit uh, dissection of uh, uh, after uh, stand. Before stand, we can see some dissection there and stenosis of the uh, 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 We can see the st st severe stenosis of left main. There, very severe. And something like uh, vulnerable or uh, aneurysm of the left main. Professor uh, Hung? Uh, yeah. Professor Hung, this is uh, Jack here from uh, Singapore. Thanks yes. for showing us such a complex uh, case, 80 years old, I see. Also fulfilling yeah. two minor HBR criteria at least, CKD as well as advanced age, very complex yes. uh, multivessel disease. Uh, do you mind if I get some opinion from my esteemed panelists first to see okay. what advice they have and what they think about your provisional strategy? Um, okay. Maybe Professor Akasaka, um, Actually, they have, they have shown you some IVERS coming back from the CERT into the left main. Uh, and any advice based on so far what is shown? Yes, uh, the, the distal region of the, the mid region of the CX is very tight. So before touch to the left main, we have to treat this, right? And then move to the left main. And the left main is uh, some oscillation and the, the vessel area is very huge, right? So uh, complete attachment including the, the oscillation might be a little bit difficult, but it might be okay to put the, the stent uh, and dilate, yeah, to cover the oscillation as well. Um, before I get DW to have the final word on strategy, maybe I get Duncan to comment the strategy of coming back from Cirque to uh, Lehmane. Okay. Is that your preferred strategy? Um, I think, yes. If, if we have an IVAS from LAD proximal to the left main, and if there are uh, no disease, that might be uh, one of the options, but LAD should be uh, much okay. important. So uh, if we try to do the, the crossover technique, I prefer to uh, put a stand from left main to LAD. Well, uh, it, from the angle, I can see that this is pretty acute, this is like a Y. And um, uh, I, first of all, I will dilate both lesions well and make sure this, uh, we, we can adequately rewire. And secondly, is, uh, I think if it is YP, Y, it depends on which blood vessel is larger, serving the larger territory and easier to. I usually chose the, um, the more difficult to re rewire, the, to do the, 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 the uh, uh, to place a stand over there first and then make sure that the second wire go through the strut is easier. Well, for my preference, I usually use uh, duty and not to do the mini crush, I use uh, the culotte. And uh, so far, so good. And then over the last 10 years, I think the recent is very low. And uh, well, in this case, I would rather uh, 
do a stenting rather than just a simple DCB. DW, you have the final word? Yes. So, uh, uh, I, I, I would like to see the spiral view and another view. And the, usually, if you're going to select the stenting crossover uh, from the proximity to the left main, is common. And uh, But the, I didn't see any uh, spider epicranial view, how much big in the LED territory. Uh, 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 So I think LED is not small. So, so if if this patient is my patient, I would like, uh, you know, the, the intend to stand the mid LED and the prox LED and the initially after checking of the IBUS and if there is a significant narrowing the post branch, I will prefer the uh, two stand uh, upfront two stand technique. You will prefer two stand upfront? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, Jack. Uh, I know this patient and they refuse to do cabbage. So my comment is that because the patient is has very severe chest pain, so is there any way that we fix a short stand in the left main and then we, we can go with the circ and the LED? Is this a good approach in a very critical situation? Dr. Khan? Yeah, yeah, I, I think this patient has got severe toxicity in all the vessels. This is practical. Toxicity and the LCX is also toxic. So to cross anything later in the LCX will be very, very devastating and will be complicated as he has nephrectomy. So it's better to what he's planning, left main to LCX, because LCX osteoproximal disease is okay. So his plan is not bad, that left main to LCX. Inverted technique is good. We? Yeah, um, so um, this is left main case, so I think now we all agree that imaging um, guy PCI uh, was uh, um, very important. So um, because um, OCT is not a very popular in Vietnam, so we are still on the learning curve of OCT. Um, I was have uh, a long history in Vietnam. So um, I just want to ask a panelist if in this case, then I was or OCT should be the choice uh, to support the PCI. I think the one that you're more familiar with, and usually left main, most people prefer IVUS, especially in this case as an osteo left main. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Go yes. Because, um, the guy do the uh, as intervention is very, very kind of classification and deploy the stand very difficult. So change to the left main, we all see that very, very badly alteration in the left main. So I think that I win. Uh, I why to the the SERP and LED also, and uh, if we can put the the uh, the IVOS to check, and we uh, put the stand to lab main to LED, I think so. Yeah, to to make it more stable. Yeah, I I think uh, as uh, Professor Hung already uh, mentioned before, actually the plan is uh, putting the two guy Y in the SERP and the L LED, and then do the IVOS and see. But however, during the procedure, because the flow in the SERP is reduced, patient got a chest pain. So that's why he need to fix uh, the, the short lesion in the mid L L6. And so far, uh, after fix that one, and now after putting the stand in this one, we they recognize that the L6 is more toxicity compared to the thing. So that's why they change the, the, the way to put a stand from the left main to the third. So this is, this is what happened now. Thanks for explaining that, uh, Kwong. Can I ask uh, Prof uh, uh, DW? When you say out front two stand, uh, this is very angulated. And I can't figure out the ostium very well. Or well, what two stand strategy uh, will you advocate for this type of uh, angulated? Yes, yes. I, I think <coughs> in this case we can do the crush technique and go load or any tap technique. It would be feasible for this patient. So no, no particular preference for the. Two I, stand. My preference is crush technique. Yeah, uh, Duncan. Yes, I think it's also important maybe that you have to separate two steps because it's so acute angle. Mm -hmm. The uh, proximal or mid uh, left circumflex have to fix with one stand first. And so the next one, one is that from the left main to the left third, it oh, can, is, uh, is not so long yeah, yeah, yeah. and just a treat the, otherwise you cannot recross anything. So one have to treat the uh, mid left third and uh, LAD first, and then we fix the left main okay. bifurcation. So uh, I, I think I think the ostium, though it's not that much clear, but still uh, some other plan, plan, if you can change that one, you can see, but especially the ostium is not looking that bad. So I'm not going for, in this tortuous anatomy, 
I'm not going for the upfront to stand strategy. It's better to go for the whatever is this this reverse technique that to go for the side branch. Anyway, Professor Hung, we are sitting here very comfortably giving you a lot of advice. And uh, yes. there's a lot of different opinion here. You are the boss, okay. uh, you're managing the patient. So can we can you show us what uh, you'll be doing and uh, how is it going on? Okay, so uh, because uh, space, uh, I have a little bit uh, slow flow and patient have uh, some chest pain. So we uh, already fixed uh, mid LCS. And uh, then we do the IVERS that you may be, uh, may be seen before. And uh, after that, so we found that the uh, quiet disease let me uh, increasing. So uh, I, want to, uh, I want to do the, um, the crossover stenting from the left main to uh, L6. The reason I do because I found on the IVERS, the awesome of the LD is uh, uh, still uh, OK. So uh, the possibility to lose uh, LD is uh, low. And uh, um, LC also quite a big uh, territory, and uh, and then uh, the, um, uh, the the side vessel of LC also uh, uh, quite big enough uh, to do that. Yeah. Can you show uh, OB Van? Can you show us the angiogram? Where where are we at now? Yes. Marco. So, so as you can see, it's not so easy to wire such angulated uh, uh, lesions. Huh? But uh, of course, Professor Hung and his team is doing it very skillfully. Um, okay, so uh, because uh, for, for the beginning, we try to access to the mid uh, LD, but uh, it's not easy. When we uh, do that, uh, we found the, the flow is not okay. So. Uh, uh, I changed uh, my uh, strategy, just uh, I come back to fix the uh, left hand first, and after that, I, 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 will, I, I will try to do the LD uh, if uh, possible, yeah. So, do you, do you? So, because the patient acquired tortuosity at uh, all of the Western system, so sometimes it's not, uh, patient not start to uh, easy to uh, cross the uh, lesion and to uh, manipulate the right one. You can see here, yeah. Um, Doctor uh, Professor Hung, this is a femoral approach. Seven French, uh, back up. Guiding yeah. no, seven French. Guiding seven French. We uh, do from, any, uh, sorry. Any tips and tricks from the panel about what you do uh, for angulated uh, wiring, vessel wiring? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, can you, can you increase the volume? I, I cannot hear very clearly. Yeah. No, no, we're just uh, watching you. Uh, this is live, right? This is what you're doing now. Is that correct? Yep. So we are watching this uh, live now. I think the stand is stented in the mid circ. So yes, and you are going to stand from circ back to the left main. Are you concerned yes. about recrossing then to the mid LED after that? I, I, uh, yeah, I, I concern a little bit, but uh, in my opinion, because of angle between the circ and left main is quite a queue. and uh, for the LED is uh, stress. So I, I think it's easier. For, uh, uh, when we uh, recross for the LD, maybe uh, maybe easier. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, tips and tricks from the panel about wiring angulated lesions? You, you have a body wire there, in the LCX and the jailed wire. So. So that is going to help for taking a stand because even to take the stand from the left main to LCX now and overlapping the distal one will be very, very 
tough because you see that even the first one, the catheter has been out for a, in a dangerous way. So this is the way they're jailing the wire. It will help. So fix the left main and LCX and later on think of the LED. I think that the, uh, in this situation, I think uh, we keep, uh, keep this, the, the same plan that we put the stand to from left main to circumflex. However, in order to protect the LED, we should use a small balloon in order to protect that yeah, if, if I, possible, in order to, yes, uh, we okay. keep it open because the LED is very deep territory. Yeah. yeah. And then in case the it's closed up, yeah. so we can use that balloon in order to right. open it up right away because the LED territory is quite big, bigger yeah. than circumflex. That's my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. I, uh, I'm also thinking about doing that a fuel balloon technique here. Do you need a LO40 or some picture for the osteal LED? Because you have to change the plane and to, to see the osteal left main. Yeah. To park the stand in a proper way, because though the osteum is not that much involved, but where the stand is now, you have to change the plane and to, you have to see that where the, the yeah. proximal stand. Actually, in this situation, I think if the stand cannot cross to the circumflex to the destination that we want to, so we can use the trap balloon, the, the inflation balloon, like a, a, a trap balloon, jet balloon technique in order to make it more backup in order to put the stand in. That's a very, yes. uh, very good yeah. technique. Yeah. But we have to do very fast, otherwise the patient cannot tolerate with the uh, ischemia. Yeah. So here here when we try to do the uh, double white technique to the cells, so uh, I, I try this first. Usually in my practice, I try this first. It's uh, uh, easy to uh, cross. If not, so I, I will try to encode technique or some. Uh, I also prepare some gazella. Yeah. Yeah, the stand is yeah, in uh, in order to position the stand, we should uh, take the stand out, or we in order to get the flow to the this the to the myocardium in order to the patient can tolerate with the ischemia. If we are already uh, uh, ready, and then we put the device into the vessel yeah. and put the balloon into the LED like that, then uh, we quickly deploy the stand. I uh, just worry a little bit about the patient uh, complaining about the chest pain, something like that. The patient without any mechanical cardiac support. Uh, we already put the uh, the IBP uh, standby. Oh, we we don't good. we don't do we just quitting. Yeah, yeah, very good. So uh, actually, this is a very high risk case. So that's why we prepare the uh, mechanical support. Uh -huh. We don't need that. We just prepare for that. In this situation, the patient now is uh, uh, more stable, and uh, the chest pain due to the mid uh, L6 already fixed. So that's why we we are a time and uh, and uh, we see what was going on now. The stand already in split, and, and now they try to put the balloon in, in the LED. Any uh, comments from Dr. Wu, Dr. Shunsuki? Just just feel free to uh, reach for the mic. Uh, Lin, you wanted to say something earlier or no? No, I, I want to answer by your comment about tips and tricks about wiring a very tortuous uh, vessel. And I do think uh, the most important step is that you have a good guide wire selection because uh, no matter how skillful you are, but you choose not a good guy, why it, it is very hard to cross the lesion in a very tortuous uh, lesion. So uh, in my own opinion, the run through is a good way to start. And uh, it is always my first choice. And I don't know about the panel's opinion. So, so my opinion, if, if you decide to decision making, you do put the stand immediately just to, the laid out on the left main that long time that caused some thrombus. Now is in the position the stand the mm -hmm. over there and the just the two minute passed. Keeping a stand in the in this sort of left main with a small aneurysm there in the proximal also keeping the stand for a long time without inflating that one is also not a, a good idea, I think. Because yeah. anytime this patient, because already you have predilated that lesion in the left main. Yeah, left main during the left main procedure is a key point. If you decide your decision making, you do and without any hesitance. And if you do hesitate, if you 
the place is just standing a long time more than one minute, two minute. That causes the the, the, the scaffold thrombosis. The, that that causes serious thrombosis in left main part. The reason why I just uh, mentioned uh, about the uh, the stand in the left main. So we already uh, everything okay, ready, and then we go in and just deploy the stand quickly. Uh, I uh, totally agree with Dr. Tukubak about the standing. We have to uh, quickly perform the procedure at this situation. We uh, we have a uh, we need to reset the machine at this moment. So just waiting for one minute. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we, we have some time. Um, you'll take a bit more than a minute or should we go for a quick lecture and come back? Yeah, yeah so we, we give the team a bit of breather and sort out the technical issues. It's a nice intermission that the machine needs the reset. So we, we give them some time. Uh, if Professor Park is okay, I think uh, yeah, I, it's a great uh, lecture I, I, that Park, Park can help us give. Uh, so we'll, uh, OB Van will stop the transmission for now. Yeah, so we don't worry, Dr. Hung. Uh, why don't you go ahead and do your case properly? We'll go for a lecture first. So we'll stop the transmission now. Uh, we'll go for the lecture first and come back to you. So okay, it's very okay. pertinent because uh, Professor uh, D.W. Park is going to talk to us on this featured lecture on outstanding issues in left main interventions. Um, the technical side, can we stop the transmission and go to Professor Park's lecture, please? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, my lecture is about the, uh, uh, the outstanding issue in the left main intervention. I'm going to uh, talk to some updated uh, uh, revascularization guideline and the technical issue. This is my disclosure. So and uh, for left main and uh, some multivascular disease, we have two options, is bypass surgery or PCI. So in both part, at the bypass surgery part and PCA part, and there are a remarkable revolution, uh, the including uh, the stand design and the uh, adjunctive pharmacology. So and uh, over the last uh, nearly thirty years, the the gap uh, bypass surgery and PCA absolutely narrowed uh, over the time. So and the. Uh, uh, this is uh, the provocated by the lot of uh, uh, important random trial and the syntax lab main pre combat and excel and noble trial. Uh, most of the uh, trial shows the PCI absolutely comparable to the bypass surgery. And, uh, and uh, this is the uh, most updated meta analysis published in the Lancet Journal and uh, include uh, nearly 4,000 individual patient level data. And uh, up to five years, no difference uh, in the cardiovascular and all cause of mortality. So, and the current available evidence is uh, a no mortality difference PCI versus bypass surgery. And the PCI has a low periprocedural complication like a stroke and the large MI, atrial fibrillation and bleeding and AKI. Bypass surgery has a lower spontaneous MI and the repeat revascularization during long time. So this is adapted, uh, updated guideline and the ACC AHA guideline. Uh, left main disease is suitable for PCI and bypass surgery. PCI is recommended a 2A recommendation. And also, and the last ESC meeting and the, uh, the European guideline combined ESC and EACTS and proposed the left main low to intermediate, also same recommendation 2A. So, and the now in our contemporary practice, we are a broad range of the left main population, we do uh, okay. left main PCI or uh, like uh, uh, the live case demo from Vietnam. So what is the remain the issue? And the still, and the true left main bifurcation region, we still debatable issue about the two stand is better and the one stand is better. And the, uh, some on the two important trials showing the two stand is good, also one stand is good. And this is absolutely depending on the overall patient anatomical situation. And if uh, suck oxygen is dominant and also a very severe uh, region and the complex region, and the, we prefer the two stand technique, there is no disease error in suck oxygen, stand crossover over is recommended. Also, future expected, what is the next issue about the left main PCI? And the, absolutely nowadays, in the concept is substantially changed. We can use the widely uh, imaging and the physiology concept in the even in the left main PCI. This is absolutely further tips and tricks to get 
clinic, uh, better clinical result. And uh, in practice, and we can use the widely imaging and the physiology. And this is uh, uh, one sort of a precision medicine for left main PCI. And uh, uh, for decision making, treat or not treat intermediate left main region, we can widely use FFR or imaging, also uh, poor uh, left main proper vessel preparation, some calcified region we requiring atherectomy and blah, blah, and the imaging is uh, essential. And uh, uh, adequate vessel size and the region length, sometimes the stand technique, it would be helpful to decide on the basis of imaging guided finding. Post PCI stand optimization, Imaging is essential on the basis of a lot of random trial, decision-making side branch after stenting crossover, FFR could be beneficial. And the uh, OCT and IBUS and uh, widely used uh, even in the complex PCI procedure, and we can use the evaluation LAD to the left main and suck and the left main. This is uh, very helpful to define the stent strategy as well as uh, left main PCI optimization. This is uh, one of the very famous uh, uh, recommendation. If you decide to stand technique and the lumen area five, six, seven, eight, and the another some value was available is based on the big size data. And uh, uh, if you're gonna use the imaging guided PCI, some observational studies showing the mortality benefit, including our main compare registry. And this is confirmed uh, last year, uh, the lot of important random trial, renovate complex PCI trial, uh, left main PCI was included more than 10%. And the, compared to the angiography guided PCI, imaging guided PCI confirmed the better outcome. October trial is approximately uh, the 25%. The left main true bifurcation region was included. The angio guided PCI shows the uh, the poor uh, outcome compared to OCT, OCT guided PCI, absolutely better outcome. So, and the, our, the Octopus trial, the all common setting, and the 15% left main PCI was included in this trial. OCT versus IBUS was comparable. And also, physiology can be used widely at the initial uh, decision making for especially intermediate left main disease, treat or not treat. The reason why, and the many cases showing the, you know, uh, in uh, the diameter stenosis, the 60%, the lumen 4.5, FFR is okay. But depending on FFR, you can do defer this region. And the, this region, OCTR region, 20, 30%, MLA 6.1, FFR is quite low. And although there is some discrepancy on the basis of FFR value, we can do uh, the uh, PCI for the main region is confidence. Uh, so, and uh, this is a very nice editorial and the lab main interbe intermediate region, IBUS and FFR, IFR can be used widely. Also, after standing crossover and the provisional standing, so ostium and geographically looks narrowing, some jailed. This is a very important data, even though diameter stenosis more than 50% suck teritorium was jailed overall this part. FFR less than 0 0.8 is quite small. 70% FFR is okay. Just the 30% FFR was uh, uh, the, uh, less than 0 0.8. So, and the high FFR, FFR is okay. And the long-term outcome is good. And the low FFR, and we can do kissing balloon dilation on the basis of the such finding. Also, FFR matched I was criteria some different. And the minimal lumen area in the ASAN data is a 4.5. And uh, this is the Western population, 5.9, some difference. So as you like this, FFR role is validated non left main PCI frame one and two and three, but the FFR role is not yet fully confirmed the validated left main PCI. The region why we plan to fake the main uh, trial, this is targeting 900 uh, significant angiographic diameter stenosis, more than 50% left main disease eligible for PCI. We will do is a randomization as the initial decision making angiographic guided left main PCI versus FFR guided left main PCI. And the primary endpoint is the target uh, region failure. And uh, in both group, 
final optimization imaging guided PCI was allowed in both group. So, and the key summary of the st state of art lab main PCI imaging physiologic many nice uh, adjunctive drug we can use at each time point initial assessment and the final uh, region preparation and the final optimization at any point we can use the widely imaging and physiology concept in lab main PCI that would guarantee improving the patient outcome. So, and this is my final key message. Uh, lab main PCI uh, is less common non lab main PCI. However, this is much complex. Volume and experience is important. Also, hot team discussion initial revascularization choice, PCI versus bypass surgery is important. Based on a lot of clinical data, a lot of experience, and the intravascular imaging is now essential for lab main, the PCI, and the FFR can be used in the, uh, the several steps in the lab main PCI. Thank you for your attention. Thanks. Uh, thanks, DW, for taking us through the whirlwind update. Uh, any comments or questions for Professor Park's lecture? Just uh, thank you very much for excellent uh, presentation. Um, one one question is, uh, if there is mismatch between the FFR and, and the imaging, uh, which tool you prefer, imaging or FFR? Yeah, yeah. There is the, our our you know conceptual decision making. FFR can be used the decision making treat or not treat. This is based on uh, updated guideline as well as uh, clinical data. Imaging. It can be used the final PCI optimization. So if there is some discrepancy in the current available data, treat or not treat decision making should be should rely on the FFR the value. <clears throat> and this, for some case, uh, imaging minimal lumen area is a five point zero, but the FFR is a zero point eight five. We can do defer. Yes, is a decision making we much depending on the FFR. Yeah, so the, the this is the making based on the FFR. But the next question is how to, to do the FFR correctly at the left main, because usually you got a lot of problem when you do the FFR at the left main. So any tip and trick for that? Yeah, so and the FFR, sometimes uh, the, if you uh, combine the diffuse region in the LAD and the circle region, isolated the left main is FFR is usual, but it's a very diffuse combined region. Usually FFR, put the FFR, most, almost all cases FFR, less than 0 0.8 at the time so we can treat the, you know, without any due, uh, further due and we can the, the easily treat the, the concomitant uh, multivessel, the PCI. Can I uh, ask your question? Thank you very much for the uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, you mentioned about the circumplex more than four millimeter, square millimeter. It's okay in order to be like a provisional standing, but you mentioned about the plaque uh, layer blocks, and we have to be very careful with that. So why you put that? For example, the ultra of the uh, circumflex is about more than more than uh, four millimeter, square millimeter, but they have the block uh, layer block inside. So we have to put the stand on it. Yes. Yeah, so and the, if you do provisional, so initially is our our usual strategy in Asam Medical Center in the many center, and if uh, there is a combine the circle disease and the circle is a big vessel. Also, a uh, plaque burden is complex and the diffuse region, we initially decided to upfront <clears throat> twist and technique. But circle osteum is not severe, intermediate, sometimes no disease. We absolutely prefer the pre -pre provisional stenting. After provisional stenting and the part, circle osteum looks like a gel. There is a, sometimes some you know, mismatch in our eyeball testing and it's like a stand strut is cross over the circle osteum looks like a jail, but different angle view, some angle is okay. There are some ambiguous point. At the time you can do FFR. FFR is more than 0 0.8 and on depending on observation, there is no RCT for that. And but in observational data more than 0 0.8. And the long-term fate of a jail, the suck system, a paper is okay. That is a, the clinical outcome is a comp the favorable. I think I think my point is for the state of the art development PCI. The next steps will be confusing part is the side branch opening, SBO. 
So that is the most important thing because like EVC main has made it mandatory to go for the kissing balloon, even in provisional stenting philosophy. You will have to open the strut, jailed strut, whether you will open it or you are not going to open that one if the FFR is normal or IFR is normal. FFR is a little bit confusing sometimes. That's true what you are telling. Not all the time is that much accurate. That's, a, that's the thing. But you know, the Karina shifting or plaque shifting, whatever it will be there, whether you are going to go for a kissing balloon inflation or not, that is a big question. And that answer is not still very clear. <clears throat> there, is a, there is no random data. It's a absolutely, you know, available EBC main trial. They uh, try to the provisional stenting, although they do provisional stenting more than 90%. They do final kissing balloon dilation, but it's a no definite random trial. We don't know. In the looks like a gelling, but the IBUS evaluation angiographically looks a gelling, and IBUS evaluation is lumen. It looks like okay. FFR is a zero point nine. We can don't touch it. If you do final kissing, that sometimes cause a dissection. It's a so costume. Yeah, I ended, time, up ended up with twenty percent. Ended up with twenty percent two stent. Ultimately, it has been converted into almost 20% cases has been converted to two stent strategy, though they have done it uh, a provisional stenting. So that's the thing. But I think the POC should be with less metal. That is also we should also be concerned. We, you got to, yeah. So, Apostel uh, Park, so uh, the concept of DCB can apply to left main PCI or not? Yes, so and the, some some doctor in Korea is now do uh, the DCB and the, even the native left main disease. I think it's still some too much challenging. And the DCB main main mechanism is cause some dissection, make a lumen, but we cannot guarantee. You know, after out of a catheter, sometimes can you know abrupt the uh, the closure. And this is a thirty years so back back the story, and still there is no big size data and the, some physician do very experimental the uh, attempt in the left main PCI with just a DCB alone, I'm not guaranteed the you know final result. Yeah, I just as uh, the last question for Dr. Park. So uh, recently we got a CT uh, imaging and also uh, provide the imaging and also the FFR based on the CT. Now, do you think that the CT can, can give you the decision making or you still need to put the patient on the table? And uh, I think uh, uh, most of uh, the precise answer can be done is uh, Dr. Akasaka is a CT FFR is uh, now is the uh, most, is ASAN is uh, just with much depending on the hyperemic index, but it's some center, some China, and they do frequently CT FFR. Is uh, Professor Akasaka? Uh, yes, uh, there are also uh, data comparison between image-based FFR and true FFR, wire-based FFR. Generally speaking, correlation is very good. But then uh, I'm just wondering, around the cutoff value, I mean the point is zero, accuracy is poor compared with another portion, right? Completely normal or completely abnormal, accuracy is very good, but uh, around the cutoff value, uh, it is the problem. But uh, we do have uh, the, uh, the data uh, comparison between, and. Uh, image-based FFR and wire-based FFR. Nobody have uh, such data, right? Finally, if there are no significant difference, the people are moved to the image-based FFR, I think. That is my speculation. Yeah, I think we can discuss this for another hour. So we're gonna go to the next topic by Dr. Sunzeki Kitani. He's gonna talk to us about the resurgence of DCA which we, we are going to demonstrate a case here in Sing Lai. Uh, thank you for giving me a, a good opportunity. I'd like to talk about the resurgence of the directional coronary atrophy. This is a directionally controllable atrophy device designed to scrape the target plug identified by IBUS, generating the action of a woodworking brain this is used to reduce plug volume, but uh, not intended for use in severe calcified region. 
This catheter was developed by Dr. Simpson and uh, in Japan in 2015, a uh, new DC catheter was revived uh, as Aterocat from Nipro. This catheter overview is, uh, consists of the proximal assembly and distal assembly and uh, motor drive unit. And uh, distal assembly consists of nose cone, housing, and uh, cutter and flat type balloon. Before DCA procedure, we must identify the plug distribution using IBUS. And then there was a catheter and rotated the uh, housing towards the uh, target plug. And then cut the advance and remove the plug is stored in the nose cone. Like this. The good indication of DCA is uh, bifurcation regions. The current, stand, uh, current standard therapy for bifurcation region is crossover stent, but carrying a shift is uh, a big problem. And the, uh, DCA can uh, control, control of the debulking by the target block here and here, at which may cause the carrying a shift. Perfect was a study on the uh, DCA plus uh, first generation DES, and it shows, showed the complex stenting was requiring only 2%, and the uh, retinal rate was quite uh, good. Uh, main vessel, 1.1%, uh, and side branch was 3.9%. Uh, so DCA can prevent complex stenting and provide good midterm outcomes by plaque developing. This is an example case of DCA DES. The target plug was here, hermetic bifurcation region, uh, opposite side of the rest of circumflex. We uh, focused on the target plug, it's, it's only the opposite side of the rest of circumflex to prevent carina shift. This is an IBUS image after a DCA procedure. Here is a uh, developed plug area. So we put the uh, crossover stent and the final kissing balloon inflation, and this is the final angular ramp. Rest of circumflex, ostium is uh, uh, no compromise like this. The next indication of DCA is a uh, four stent with PCI because DCA can remove the large amount of the plaque. In terms of DCA alone, uh, it's a uh, past study shows that this alone causes a high restenosis run TLR rate due to excessive intimal hyperplasia after DCA. DCB can suppress intimal hyperplasia, a major contributor to restenosis in DCA. This is the concept of DCA DCB strategy. <laughs> Uh, DCA and DCB has uh, uh, respective advantages and disadvantages. But combining DCA and DCB can uh, complement the effect uh, to uh, each ad advantage and disadvantage. So DCA DCB strategy is considered a very reasonable approach for stentless PCI, especially for bifurcation regions. DCA DCB registry was conducted to <laughs> evaluate the safety and the efficacy of, uh, of four coronary bifurcation regions. LMT bifurcation region accounted for 80% and true bifurcation 14%. This is the QC analysis compared with previous represented DCA alone study of Abaca study. <laughs> DCA DCB registry, the percent plug area of the DCA was 56%, relatively higher than that of the, uh, compared with the Abaca study of uh, 45%. The, in the Abaca study, uh, Abaca study, the uh, retinal rate was 20% and TLR was 15% at six months. And uh, this uh, <coughs> result uh, not acceptable, uh, not unacceptable uh, in the current DES era. Uh, in DCA DCB registry, the uh, clinical outcome is very nice at uh, 12 months. Resonance rate was only 2.3% and the uh, TLR was only 3.1%. So, uh, this study showed the uh, DCA DCB for bifurcations, including LMD, provides uh, good clinical outcomes and minimal side branch damage without a stent. In the DCA DCB strategy, aggressive plug debulking is not necessary in contrast to traditional DCA alone procedures. 
this makes the procedure safer and easier. I'll show the uh, two <coughs> DCA DCB cases for LMT bifurcation region. This case is uh, my uh, representative case from my early experience of DCA for, of, and to DCB. Uh, this is the LMT bifurcation region, made in a classification 011 region. We usually uh, consider the, a complex stem to strategy like in such a region. But we performed DCA, uh, both LAD and then LCX like this. And this is the angiogram after DCA, a very nice result and uh, without uh, uh, this section. Uh, this is uh, uh, IBAS images after DCA. Uh, yellow arrows show the developed black area. Nice result with a dissection. Then we performed DCB angioplasty for LCX and then LAD. This is the final angiogram. And the 11 months follow up CAG revealed a nice result. And follow up CT and after four years after treatment and very nice result around the LMT. So this case suggests that DCA, DCB can provide a favorable long-term outcome, even in LMT through bifurcation regions. Second case is a, a LMT bifurcation 111 with familiar hypercholesteremia. The rest of circumflex of osteo is a severe stenosis with street-like appearance and the FFR measurement is 0.74. And the uh, uh, LAD has, uh, has also a moderate stenosis from LMT to LAD, but uh, LAD is a uh, FFR as possible. This is the uh, IBAS image of the left circumflex. Uh, yellow arrow shows the uh, target block, uh, mainly opposite side of the LAD. And the, uh, these are the IBAS image of LMT to LAD. Uh, here is a target block. First, uh, uh, I performed the DCA for uh, LAD like this. And the, this is uh, uh, after DCA of IBAS. Uh, here is a uh, developed block area, a very nice uh, acute lumen gain. Then uh, DCA was performed for LCX. Uh, here is a uh, developing block area. And then DCV uh, for right. LAD and the LCX. This is the final angiogram, a very nice result. And 11 months for all, FCAG also revealed no dystenosis. Even LMT through bifurcation region with less calcification and short region can be treated by stentless with DCA, DCV. Uh, so this is the final slide. Uh, DCA plays a, a crucial role in preventing carinus and plug shift in bifurcation regions, thereby allowing avoidance of complex stenting. Uh, but DCA alone is associated with a highly stenosis rate. However, the emergence of DCB has the potential to change that situation. In the DCA DCB strategy, aggressive plug developing is not necessary making the procedure safer and easier compared to the traditional DCA alone strategy. Effective utilization of DCA expands the therapeutic options for the treatment of large bifurcation regions. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks Dr. Kitani. A very interesting lecture. Uh, and we did have a case shown very difficult technique actually. So I don't know how many people okay. have access to okay, the uh, okay. lecture. Thank you. In the interest of time, unfortunately, we have to go back to the CAF lab. I think everyone is waiting to see what's happening in the CAF lab. Professor yeah. Hung, we're back with you. Yes, yes, yes. Can you see, uh, hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you quite well. Go ahead, oh, please. Very good. So, uh, unfortunately, I uh, have uh, some uh, uh, technical system, but uh, after we uh, fix that, so. Uh, and after that, we rewire again uh, uh, to the LED, and uh, we uh, just only use the balloon to uh, uh, dilate uh, in the mid part. You know, in the mid part, uh, with the the bifurcation, with the first sector, it's a very severe calcification and stenosis with uh, no flow over there. So we pre-dilate a little bit. So now everything's okay. Come back, the flow is okay. But uh, we would like to uh, ask the panelists about discussion. Our plan: want to do the 
uh, uh, drug uh, eluting uh, balloon here uh, from the uh, LD from the, the, the middle pass to the Austin because on uh, uh, I will show uh, it's a quite acceptable. So, uh, it's a very, um, Professor Hung, can I, I clarify your strategy? You are asking for DCB so for osteo LED, and, uh, and are you stenting the mid bit. LED as well, or so just DCB as opinion? well? Okay, can you, maybe can I can. Um, no, can you Mal show the uh, Duncan, yeah. you, you, you can see the graph. Yes, we can see your Ivers playing now. You want to play the Ivers? Okay. But uh, well, okay, we can we, see that we, we discussed that that, that uh, you may your Y may be in the diagonal because the um, okay, and so we, LAD and is on the left side. Is a yeah, there's a big diagonal, but uh, the LAD seems to be pointing towards the left side. So there's a uh, two bifurcations downstairs. Yeah, I mean the one in the septal profundus and the other is a. Uh, so uh, Duncan is probably right. Uh, this vessel is very angulated. Yeah. The distal LED is the one that is angulated backwards, almost looking like a septal uh, for the distal yeah. LED. Absolutely. Mid LED part is, looks like subtotal region and the wire is past the diagonal branch. If you recross the LED and the, to the distal part, if you open up this one, this is not small vessel. This is LED, absolutely. No, no, no. no. I think the wire is in the diagonal. Yes, yes, we agree. Where is in the diagonal, and there is a severe disease here. But if you try to involve all these things, and for these yes. patients, I think something you will have to leave behind, or the or maybe only DCV there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's very long. Okay. Thanks. Very so, good um, idea. So, I think um, also the Y in the diagonal, so we have to rewind to the to the LED, and I suppose yeah. um, the double dual lumen microcatheter. For more support yeah. and uh, rewire uh, to the LED, and this yeah. patient will have also the very big uh, septal branch, very big one. Yeah. So if you lose this one, maybe we have AV block, uh, and patient yeah. will be worse. So I think uh, we should keep uh, a Y into the, uh, the the septal branch if if we want to do any balloon or stenting in the proximal LED. Yeah. So actually, Professor Hong just uh, opened the the sense rod from the L6 to the LED. And also, he just dilate the 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 septum branch uh, to keep the flow. Uh, and and now he of course he will uh, rewire the guy wire into the distal LED. Uh, but the question yeah. here is, uh, should we do the uh, uh, the drug uh, coating yeah. balloon, or you you just stand the uh, the mid part of the LED and also the ocean part of the LED? That's that's really very critical question here, because the angulation <laughs> you have seen here. Yeah. So uh, the angulation is not that much. So it's an inverted tap yeah. will be, will go, you will make the carina, long carina. And yeah. carina will be very long in the left main, this left main. Yes. So yeah. it's better if you don't touch the ostium, if the IVAS is showing that the ostium already doesn't have that much problem, then only the yeah. focal lesion in the early, in the, the septum level yeah. to make a stenting there. Okay. Okay. So, so I, so I think, uh, Professor Hung, the the opinion of the panelists yeah. here is, you try to rewire the distal LED and then you fix maybe yeah. with a stand yeah. and maybe you just yeah. ignore the ostium of the LED. Okay. So thanks, uh, panelists and uh, chairman. So, I I also have planned like that. So now I use a dual lumen uh, microcatheter to try to assess the uh, LED, and then I uh, predilate and may make a uh, soft stand over there if. There are some dissection, big dissection, uh, and the, for the Austin or LD, I try to use uh, DCB, just uh, only DCB. Yeah, it is my plan. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Professor Hung. We'll, we'll eagerly watch you recross the dessert. Actually, I think the the uh, maybe the dual LED might be because they're very yeah. big and still have a septum, a small septal or a septal brand at the. That we what we yeah. call the diagonal. So actually, it's the true bifurcation. And I think the patient is more than eighty years away. So I think we can step. Uh, we can uh, stack the procedure if the patient don't have the symptoms. Also okay because the, the left man is okay already. The second blade also yeah. fixed already. So yeah. uh, maybe we we uh, just to keep the uh, good flow to the LED. And then next step we will next procedure 
maybe next day we will uh, fix the LED. That's safe for, for the patient. Okay. What do you think? So okay. I, good. I was veering towards that opinion as well because we have 80 years old, single yeah. kidney, yeah. creatinine elevated, and uh, yeah. uh, after all, 80 years old. Uh, so in fact, Lynn was mentioning just stand the ulcerated lamin and don't do anything else as one approach mm -hmm. in medical therapy, the rest. So I, I think that if you have more challenges, you may end up with complication. You potentially okay. can even put a short stand in the mid LED across and, the septal and, 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 and stop know, there. Yeah. And you know that yeah. this septal branch you are telling the two predilect, this septal branch wiring will be very, very, very difficult. You see the origin of the septal branch? It is coming like a, you need a reverse wiring there. Because you can't do that one because it will be very tough. It will be through that strut. It will be very, very tough and it will be very much complicated there. So no, no, not to touch the septal branches, even to preserve it, that one. And no. also the medial lesion, the le that one is also so much tortuous there and the focal lesion is there. So keep it like this, maybe, the two um, flows there. Professor Hung, um, I think there's a mix of opinion. We'll, we'll listen to you, to what you want to do. But you can okay. consider a more conservative approach. Uh, we're just treating the tighter lesions in the LED and leaving the rest I or trying to treat everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the advice. Uh, so I, I also uh, I agree with the advice. I also careful uh, uh, to take care about the septum, very big one. But however, the situation now is very good. The flow is OK. No really uh, uh, big dissection on either, so I, I tried that, uh, to fix the very short stand for the uh, mid LED, and then I, I still thinking about the DCB for the, <laughs> for the proximal one, just only that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interest of uh, time, uh, we need to close this section with the with the Vietnam National Heart Institute's live uh, section. So actually, we have a case with uh, three vessel disease and uh, uh, chronic uh, kidney disease. And uh, Professor Hung already uh, demonstrated the way we uh, we we fix the left main and and the third how to change the strategy between the procedure. And now he he uh, continue to work uh, with the mid uh, LED lesion and uh, we will see the, the result later on. So thank you very much again, uh, the Vietnam National Arts uh, Institute, uh, Professor Hung team, and uh, thank you again, all the panelists' suggestion, uh, comment, and uh, we close this section now. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for coming.